Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera to all of you. So in the previous video, we already learned how to use the external interrupt. Right now, we are going to do or we are going to learn how to do an end timer interrupt programming. So basically, in Atmega 32, there are three timers, which is timer 0, timer 1, timer 2, and timer 3. Right. So in Atmega 32, three timer available, okay, which is timer 0, timer 1, and timer 2. So there are two timers interrupt type, okay, which is overflow and compare mesh. Alright. So overflow over rollover timer flat. The other one is compare mesh timer flat. Okay, so the detail on the overflow, how the overflow works, and how the compare mesh. Sometimes we call it as a CTC. Alright, CTC. You will learn in more details in the timers programming in the in the next module. Alright, so in this timer, since we have three timers here, so timer one and a timer two. The size of this timer here is eight bit. Okay, while timer 1, the size of our timer 1 is 16 bit, right? So the detail on this timer here will be covered in the next module. So in this, in this module here, in, in this sub-module, we are only looking how to write the, down the timer in top. Okay, what is the, the the instruction or the lines or the codes that you, you need to use in order to write the timer interrupt programming. So as I mentioned earlier, okay, so we have two type of timer. One we use the overflow method, the other one is CTC method. So in this slide here, we focus on the overflow method or sometimes we call it as a rollover timer flex. So if the timer interrupt in the trap register is enabled, right, the timer overflow flag is raised, which is the overflow flag is denoted by or is labeled by TOVX, right? So this X here you can replace with either zero for timer zero. Right? This X here you can replace with zero for timer zero. One if you're using a timer 1 and 2 if you're using a timer 2 right whenever the timer overflow flag is raised the timer rolls over and the micro p jumps to the interrupt vector to service the isr okay so in this case here in this in this uh, timer interrupt programming okay we need to the micro p needs to see this T O V flex when the T O V flex okay when T O V X equal to one then the micro P knows that you are going to do the interrupts okay so to enable the interrupt for a given timer we must set the T O I E X bit that held by the T I M S K register. Okay, so again, this X here, okay, you can replace it with 0, 1, and 2, depending what timer that you're going to use. Alright, so let's look at this table here. Alright, so for timer 0, the flag that you need to look at is TOV0. While to enable, okay, this flag here, this flag, okay, this three flags here, are inside of your TIFR register. Okay, why? To enable that particular timer interrupt, okay, you need to enable it at TIMS and SK register, which is if you want to use the timer zero, you need to enable TOIE zero. If you're going to use a timer one and timer two, you need to enable at TOIE1 and TOIE2. This is similar to your external hardware interrupt in which you need, in order to enable, you need to enable at what register? At GICR 
register okay you need to find out what is int0 int1 and int2 all right so how to enable the timer interrupt all right similar to what we are doing in gicr to enable the timer interrupt you need to know what is the location of each of this timer here all right so in this case yes for example lah okay to enable timer interrupt which is a timer zero you can write as follow t i m s k okay and then open bracket okay one shift to the left to t o i e zero okay close bracket and semicolon and of course the other thing that you need to enable is at your SEI. Okay, similar to what we have learned in the earlier uh, sub module. Okay, to enable an interrupt, you need to enable at two locations. Okay, one at your registers. Okay, interrupt registers. The other one, this is interrupt. Eh? interrupt register the other one at your status register which is at your i flag okay this is uh, interrupt register can be divided into two if you're using the external hardware interrupt you can use you need to enable at gicr if you're going to use the timer interrupt you need to enable at aim s Okay. So again, if you if if you don't want to use this kind of uh, way to write your programming, you you always can use this thing here. All right. So for example, lah, just now we're going to uh, enable timer zero. So what happened is you just write down zero p. Where is your timer zero? timer zero overflow eh? because timer zero we have for timer okay we have two type of timer okay two mode not two type two mode of timer okay one is we call it as a overflow method the other one is compare mesh or sometimes we call it as a ctc all right so for the order overflow Okay, if you see here, everything uh, that start with a T here, D is a overflow method. Okay, okay, the one we started with a T, D is a overflow method. All right, the one we started with zero, uh, sorry, O, D is compare mesh or CTC method. Okay, for example here, you are going to use the timer zero overflow method so what you're going to write there is okay zero 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 one okay because this one here you see timer zero overflow interrupt enable so you write down zero b zero 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 one or you okay you also can write down t i s k equal to zero x Zero one also can okay depend on you. Ataupun you can use this kind of programming okay. T I M K put one to where to T O I E zero. Okay, this is how we're going to enable the, the timer in T I M. SK okay the TMSK stand for timer interrupt mask register okay so let's look at these examples here okay you are going to write a program to enable or to unmask the timer zero overflow interrupt okay we already did this one here okay you can write down TIMSK equal to one okay shift to the left until you reach the TOIE zero and then of course lah you need to enable at your status register as well right or you can simply 
write down T I M S K equal to zero B find the location the timer zero overflow interrupt okay so according to this T I M S K the location of timer zero overflow interrupt at B zero so that's why we put zero B zero 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 one or you can also write down T I M S K instead of using binary you can use it as S R D C okay followed by S E <coughs> okay B you are going to disable mask the timer zero overflow interrupt so how to disable easy to disable you just put zero all right so that's why we put T M S K equal to zero B put zero at timer zero or you can put zero to all of the timer interrupt okay so this, if you write down this something like this you disable all the timer interrupt okay and show how to disable all the interrupt with a single instruction okay you can use the cli cli stand for clear i flag in your status register okay so every time you put a cli means that the status register the i flag inside of your status register so this is your status register the i flag is here always zero okay so you disable the interrupt globally all right so let's look at this example here okay this program use timer zero okay to generate a square wave on pin port b pin number five while at the same time data is being transferred from port c to port d okay so you are going to generate a square wave what is a square wave this is a square wave consists of logic one and logic zero So here, okay, in order to produce this square wave, you need to know what is the delay here. Or we call it as a time signal here for the logic 1 and time signal for the logic 0. Alright, so in this case here, okay, port B produce a, what we call here, a square wave. While port C and port D the data is being transferred at the same time okay the port c and port d depending on the switch here. all right so if and anything that you press in from this switch will be displayed on your leds okay so how to write down the program all right to write down the program first thing first okay we recall but what we're going to do is <coughs> okay step number one okay you need to include your interrupt header okay there is a step number one similar to what we learned in the external hardware the interrupt right and then after that Okay, you started with integer main void, open clear bracket, and close clear bracket. Step number two, what you're going to do? This is step number two. Initialize your input output port. Okay, so in this case here, okay, you're going to see this case here. Port B, okay, port B, pin number five, you make it as an input or output. This one as a output why output because you want to generate a square wave okay so you make your port b pin number five as output what about port c port c as an input why as an input because you connected to your switch and port d also as your output why because you're connected to your with to your led or you can see here okay the data is being transferred from port C to port D. So you know that port C always uh, input while port D is your output. Because you want to send the data from port C to your port D. Okay, so 
so that's why ddrb 0 b 0 0 1 why 0 0 1 because you want only want to make your port be pin number 5 as a output the rest you make as a as input or you can simply declare or initialize all the port b as a output also can all right and then ddrc equal to 0 Okay, and then this is you. You going to port C as an input, but now here you are missing another lines here, which is port C equal to O X F F. Why? Because since your port C are connected to your input, you need to enable your boot up register. So enable your port up. Every, every, every time you connect your import to your uh, switch, make sure you enable your put up register. Alright, and then DDRB equal to OFFF. So this one here, what you're going to do here? Alright, this one here, you're going to make your port D as a output port. Okay, that is step number two. What about step number three? What the step number three saying? Okay, the step number three saying is that you need to enable. Okay, this is step number three. Eh? Step number three, enable interrupt. Okay, there are two locations that you need to enable the interrupt. One at your interrupt register. Okay, and then the second one here is your at your status register. Okay, so interrupt register, you have two type, two type of interrupt register. One is at your DICR, the other one is at DIMSK. Since this one here, we're going to use a rollover timer flag, which is in this example here, we are going to use the timer zero. So timer zero, we need to enable at TI MSK. So that's why you we put TI MSK equal to put one to T O I E zero. Okay, if you don't want to write like this, you can always write TI MSK zero B zero 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 and you need to find out where what is the location of your timer zero overflow method all right so refer back to your timsk okay so it is at bit number zero okay so you just write down timsk zero b zero 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 one so you enable timer zero overflow interrupt and then after that, you're going to enable at your status register. How to do that? Just write down S E I open open bracket and and after that you follow by semicolon here. Yeah. So this is step number three. Okay, and in the timer interrupt. Okay, there are what we call here another step that you going to do is okay. So I put here this is step three B lah. Okay, so this is a three three A. Okay, so this is a three B. Okay, step three B. What you going to do is step three B. Okay, step three B. You need to do the timer setting. Okay. So this is the timer setting that you're going to do, all right? Which is okay. We will learn about this timer setting more detail in the next module. Okay, so you just put, you just know that. Okay, after you enable your interrupt, then you need to do a timer setting, and then after that, step number four. Your main program, okay. So this is your main program inside of your while loop. Okay, you have the program. Okay, so in this case here, what is your main program here? Uh, it says that you need to send the port C to your port 
A. So you just write down port D equal to port spin C. Just like that. Alright. And then last but not least. Okay, this stand on for eh. Step number five is your ISR instruct service routine. Okay. So since this one here, okay, since we are going to use the timer zero overflow method, so the name here should be correct lah. Timer zero underscore OBF underscore vet. Kat mana kita nak see this name here? Okay, you can always refer this name here to this. Wait, eh? I find out the table earlier. Table. Where is our table? Ah, this table here. Okay. Okay, you need to follow this table here. Okay. So, this is the vector name in the win area. Okay, since you're going to use the timer zero overflow method. So, these are the name. Timer zero underscore OVF underscore vector. Okay, so always look at or I'll always refer to this table for the ISR. Okay. After you you create your ISR, okay, the correct ISR, and then you write down the program line inside of this ISR. Okay, in this case here, you are going to do a what we call here to do a square wave. So that's why here, alright. So that's why here. You see lines here. Okay, this is another timer setting lah. Okay, to 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 restart the timer. Okay, so just uh just ignore this part. Okay, we learn later for this part. Okay, so I I want you to focus on this part here. Okay, since you are going to do a square wave. Okay, in which from this square wave you know that the value always toggle. Okay, from zero it becomes one one to zero zero two. One. So that is good. It, you see here, port B equal to port B exclusive or put one to your five. Okay, let's say lah. Sekarang ni your P B five. Okay, is zero. Okay, so what happen is if you run with this one here, so what happen is P B five the card the the new P B five sama dengan zero. Okay. Exclusive or with one. Okay, what happens when you exclusive or with one? It become one. Okay, the next cycle, your PB5 equal to, okay, the current PB5 here is one. Lah. Okay, one exclusive or with one, then you get zero. And this will keep repeating. Okay, so this is how you're going to write the program so now we want to know how this program works okay so now here when you initialize the timer zero register and the, then enter the infinite loop to keep the CPU busy okay so this is just after you initialize your timer setting timer zero register settings all this thing here what happening is we go to your while loop here and it will keep and it will keep looping to this uh, while loop here okay while port c data brought in and issue to the port d continuously the toi e0 flag is raised uh, no, tov0 flag is raised as soon as a timer zero rolls over then what happen is okay so what happened is now okay now now you are here okay so you you will uh, read the value from pin C and send out to port D and whenever your T of V 0 equal to 1 okay and what happened is your AVR will clear I bit in your status register okay so I bit in status register will become 0 Okay, so this is to indicate that 
the microphone currently serving and interrupt. Okay, when this happen, what happen is, okay, the ISR, what happen is the microphone will jump to do at ISR. Okay, one is jump to do this ISR, and then it will toggle this value here. All right, and after that, after this value has toggled, and you reset back your timer so that it will start generating a delay. And after it sees this curly back here, what happens is it will go back to your while loop here. Okay, so now what happens is here, the cut sini, what happens is your TOV0 will be set to zero again. Okay, and we go to here. And then it will keep looping here until your TV TOV zero equal to one again. Okay, once it's one again, so the status register I flag in status register will be zero. And now the microphone know that you're going to do the interrupt, and this task will keep repeating. Okay, this is what happens when you use the program timer. Interrupt. It is different with your external timer interrupt in which for the external timer interrupt, okay, whenever you press the switch, it will go to your interrupt. But for this one here, whenever the time is up, for example, lah, you're going to to mix uh, this uh, square wave here, okay, for example, this is 500 millisecond, okay, each of this square wave here. Okay, for the low and high level here is 500 millisecond. So every time 500 millisecond, okay, it will go to this ISR. Okay, and then it will keep repeating wait until 500 T of V0 equal to 1 and it will go back to this ISR. So every 500 millisecond, the ISR will trigger compared to external hardware interrupt. Every time you press the switch and it it will trigger your interrupt. Right. Next is a compare mesh timers interrupt, which is sometimes we call it as a CTC. Alright, so this one here, is, if you're going to use the CTC, okay, the interrupt will be done periodically. Okay, so the program can be written, you see the CTC mode and compare mesh flag. Okay, previously, for the uh, what we call here for the overflow method okay we are looking at the TOV flex okay this is overflow eh? overflow okay we need to focus on the TO monitoring the TOV flex but for the CTC mode okay we need to focus on the OCF flex Okay, so to do so, load the OCR register with the proper value and initialize the number to the CTC mode. When the content of the TCNT matched with OCR, the OCF flag is set, which causes the compare interrupt to occur. So, no worries. Okay, you will learn detail on this CTC mode in the next module. Okay, so now we just want to see how to write the timer programming interrupt okay for example yeah. using timer 0 why a program that toggle pin port b5 every 400 milliseconds while at the same time transferring data from port c to port d which is similar to what we done in the overflow method earlier okay so what are the difference here okay you see here d is the same this is step number one enable your interrupt header all right and then follow by step number two initialize your input output port step number three a okay this is a three a lah. okay three a enable your interrupt register okay you have two location to enable your interrupt register one at your TIMSK, the other one at your status register and step three b okay so this is a timer setting for your TC okay for your CTC mode okay you will learn later how to do this timer setting step number four 
okay port D equal to pin C okay which is you want to read the value from pin C and send to your port D and step number five okay make sure that you are okay create your ISR make sure that the ISR is correct ISR name is correct so it's different this one here we use the compare mesh or CTC mode so timer zero underscore com C O M P underscore that all right so this you look here okay in this case here okay because this is uh, for this one here okay for the CTC it will do the timer periodically okay so that's why you no longer need to to initialize your timer again Com as opposed to or compared to overflow method in order to in to redo the what we call here the delay or timer again you need to initialize back your timer kat sini okay if you don't put here what happen is it only produce one period only 500 millisecond for the low why 500 millisecond for the one will not happening okay so that's why we need to put the timer setting here that is the difference between ctc and overflow overflow only can do one time delay okay you cannot do it periodically if you want to do it periodically you need to initialize again your timer overflow okay as compared to ctc ctc will automatically then periodically right so that is for the timer in cup programming right it is similar to your external hardware in trap all right only you have the 3b here the timer setting the rest summer Okay, now we're looking at the interrupt parity and interrupt inside interrupt. Okay, so first we look at the interrupt parity. Okay, what will happen? Okay, we we take this scenario here. What will happen when two? Okay, you have a two or more interrupt are activated at the same time. Which one will respond first? Okay, for example, lah, you had three switches. The first switch for INT0, the second switch for INT1, and the third switch, okay, you have switch 1, switch 0, connected to INT0, switch 1, connected to INT1, and switch 2, connected to INT3, okay. Then, at the same time, you press all these switches together, okay. So, which interrupt will respond first? So, in this case here, it will use the interrupt priority. It will look at that which one has the more priority compared to others. Okay. How to do that? Okay. If two or more interrupt are activated at the same time, the interrupt with the higher priority is served. So, where we, where we are going to, to look which one is, has the highest probability, which one has the lowest priority. Alright, so this one here, you can see uh, the priority of the interrupt, you can see at the address of the interrupt in the interrupt vector. Okay, so we go back to our interrupt vector punya table. Right, so where is my interrupt vector punya table? Okay, so sorry, we need to go back. Okay, see the interrupt vector punya table. Alright, where is my interrupt? Vector in the table. I think somewhere around here. Is it? No. Okay, way back. Kat belakang lagi. Oh, jauhnya. Okay, this is your interrupt vector in the table. Okay, you see here. Between INT0, INT1 and INT2, INT0 has the highest priority compared to INT1 and INT2. So when you press all the three switch together, the INT0 will go to your interrupt. Okay, of course lah, the most top parity here is your reset. Okay, if you put a button, a switch reset, 
okay and then at the same time you press your it0 weapon is it will go to reset okay because the reset is top priority okay this is a rom location yeah. the address location of the reset is zero zero okay so this is the top priority here highest priority so this one is less priority so always refer to this intra vector table to find out which one has the highest priority Okay, what is Sorry. Uh, Alright. Why are we here? Still here, dear. Okay, okay, okay. I know. Just skip it. Okay, now we are at money today. Alright, that's it. Okay, so another example. Okay, so you have an int 0, which is at address 0, 0, 0, 2, and an int 0, 2 at address 0, 0, 0, 0. Those are int 0, 2 has a higher priority. So this one will go to your intro. Okay, or will be served by the micro P instead of your int 2. Because int 0 is, has higher priority compared to int so this is not int3 int2 sorry right there is a interrupt priority so next what happened if avr is executing and isr belong to an interrupt another interrupt is activated okay means that you're going to do an interrupt inside an interrupt something like this lah okay now you have a main program Okay, suddenly, okay, suddenly you, you invoke your interrupt, okay, so the program A will be interrupted, okay, so you do the more program, at, at the middle of the main program, you, you interrupt with a program A, so what happens is your program A do the interrupt, before the program A finish, okay, so this is a finish, before the program A finish, then you put another interrupt which is program program B. Okay, you try to another interrupt which is program B to interrupt in the middle of your program A. Can you do that? Can this program B go to your uh, uh, is executed? Okay, so this is the answer here. Yeah? When FVR begin to execute an SR. So the micro P will disable the IB in status register. Okay, when status register the IB equal to zero, what happen is causing all the interrupt to be disabled. Those no other interrupt occur while serving to the interrupt. Okay, remember back. Okay, the in order to to use the interrupt, you need to enable your interrupt. There are two locations to enable it, your interrupt. Satu dekat mana? Your interrupt register. And the second one here at your status register. Okay. If you enable at your interrupt register, but your status register is disabled, whatever you, you cannot execute your interrupt. Similar to this one lah. Okay, when your AVR or micro P execute an ISR or when you go to the interrupt service routine, automatically the, the micro P will disable the status register. Okay, your status register, your IFLAG here automatically become zero. When this becomes zero, what happens here? You cannot, the interrupt here, all the interrupt are enabled. So, whenever you press the the you going to interrupt with the program B. So contohlah like this program B here is INT1. So this is INT2 for example. Okay. Whenever although this one here has a higher priority compared to this one, but now the micro P. Okay. The micro P 
currently executing this program A. Okay, so what happened is because now at the when the micro P execute this program A, the I become zero. So even though this I and T one, you the micro P will not entertain this interrupt here because the interrupt will never be occur while serving the another interrupt. Okay, when R E T I is executed or when or at the end or uh, after your program A is has finished, alright. So when your program A is finished, what happens is the I flat in the status register will be enabled. We will set one, causing the other interrupt to be set. Okay, so you cannot do interrupt inside and interrupt. Only one interrupt can execute at one time. Cannot more than one interrupt. Okay, so you need to to uh, to make sure that interrupt. A is finished then after that you can do the interrupt B because of this I flex here right so that's all for today